Hello everyone, my name is Reino and I have the privilege of being part of Fellowship City. I also have the privilege today of being with you on Christmas Day, the day that we as Christians celebrate uh, the birth of Jesus Christ, our Messiah, who we as a church call wild. So in the past couple of weeks, here's what we said. We said we have a wild Messiah that broke societal rules through teaching, proclamation and behavior. We said that this was for the purpose of his mission and it was to establish his kingdom. Uh, and we said that we believe that he glorified God in his untamed obedience to him. Awesome right now, phenomenal message. Where do we find this in the Bible? Well, because it's Christmas, I thought that we will start with a story of the birth of Jesus. And you'll see as we dive deeper and we read the scriptures and we make our way through the Gospels in this coming time of New Year and January, you'll see that the Gospels have a way of throwing the question back to the reader. You ask who was Jesus to the Gospel and the Gospel, after you read it, throws it back to you to say, well, you decide for yourself. I gave you all the evidence and everything that you needed to know. The well-known English theologian Alistair McGrath says that uh, the gospel stories are more like a detective story than it is a connect the dots story. It's more a story wanting to answer the question, who done it or who did this, than it is a story that explains everything that the story tells about. Now, as you read through the gospels, there's one thing that you will note immediately, and that is that Jesus is not boring and he is not predictable. Think about all the cards that you received for Christmas this year. Think about all the WhatsApp messages that were sent to you in a time like this. Think about the advertisements you saw in malls and shops. Think about the advertisements you saw on television and on the internet. What do you see when you look at them? What kind of pictures do you see? You might have seen sheep, shepherd, stars, angels, a young woman with a baby and a young man uh, kind of crouched uh, by her side. You might have seen other animals all attending to this baby. You might have seen three magi or wise men. Uh, you might have seen even a guy wearing a red suit with a big beard. Uh, you might have seen Christmas trees with Christmas decorations. There's so many things that we connect to Christmas. Many of them, for me personally, seem to be boring and seem to be predictable, which is not what the Messiah was. So now the question that we should ask is, is that how it all happened? Is it accurate to view Jesus like this? Does this look like a wild messiah if we just look at all the cards and images? Philip Yancey, well-known writer, he wrote a book called The Jesus I Never Knew. And in this book, he asks this phenomenal question that I want to put to us. He says, if Jesus came to reveal God to us, then what do we learn about God from that first Christmas? And he puts forth four things that I would like to name and then describe, and then we'll read the Christmas story. He says that what we learn about God from that first Christmas or from the birth of Jesus is the fact that God is humble. Think about that. The creator and the sustainer of the world and of everyone in the world is humble. Why? Well, because Jesus was born without any fanfare. No special place for him to be born. No journalists waiting on the outside to write the article and to take the photo. No special midwives and a team of nurses tending to this birth. He was born alone in an animal shelter with his mom and his dad and animals all around him. There really was no one at his birth except people who couldn't even testify in court in those days, which was shepherds looking after sheep that wasn't even their own. They were looking after other people's sheep. I've had the privilege of being in Bethlehem in Israel. I've had the privilege of visiting the church that is called the Church of Nativity. And once you actually go down into the church and you go down to a spot that might have been the place where Jesus was born, you realize how small it was. There really wasn't a lot of space. It was a small place where animals could take shelter. Just a, a, a kilometer or so away from that church, you find these caves uh, where the sheep and other animals usually slept in the evening. Guys, it's, it's a cave. It's like a hole in the rock and there's really nothing else there. That is how humble the king of the universe was born. He was also, we learn uh, from his birth, approachable. Think about this. The God of the Old Testament had so much glory, so much holiness, so much presence that people could never see it. People couldn't handle it. 
And when they saw it, they still couldn't handle it. And stuff happened to them as they um, had to behold the glory of God. In the Old Testament, people often feared this massive, universal, omnipresent, almighty, omniscient God. Why? Well, because that's who he is. And he's way bigger than we can possibly comprehend. And now he comes as a baby, the most approachable human being on earth. There's nothing scary about a baby. On the contrary, when we look at a baby, we are usually drawn to the baby. We want to look at a baby, we want to touch a baby, we want to uh, make funny gestures and faces for a baby. There's nothing more approachable or no person more approachable in this world than a baby. And that's how God chose to reveal himself in this birth, is that he's an approachable God. If you think about approaching a fish tank or a small aquarium in your house, the moment you approach this tank or the aquarium, you'll see the fish go, whoa, something massive is here, and then they swim away. I think that's how people in the Old Testament might have perceived God, is God is so massive and he made his presence known in such significant ways that once he approaches, the only thing that you can really do is flee. And now God comes in the form of a baby, approachable. Philip Yancey says from the birth of Jesus, we learn that God came into the world as an underdog. Think about the circumstances in which Jesus chose to be born on planet Earth. They were ruled by a foreign power. Uh, he was born into a um, um, n- not a well-known family, a humble family. He grew up in a village that wasn't well-known in his time. At that point, as we read in the Gospels, Caesar Augustus uh, wanted to you know, put his stamp of authority on proceedings uh, in that whole area. Um, they were exiled, actually, and they had to go and live in Egypt for a time because Herod wanted to kill all the infant boys. I mean, if you just think about the circumstances that he had to start this mission in, he was most definitely the underdog. That's how he chose to enter the world. Fourth thing is that he is courageous. As we read the Gospels, we see that people see Jesus ministering. We see, people, uh, we see Jesus teaching. And then people go, who is he? Isn't he just a, the son of a carpenter? I'm quite skeptical about what he says about himself and about what he can do. Jesus was courageous in the fact that he started his mission from that point and from that place. There they were, in the animal shelter, against all odds, with the assignment of a lifetime. Now that takes courage. And we see that Jesus is courageous all through his earthly life and his earthly ministry. Even the last evening when Jesus sits in the Garden of Olives, Gethsemane, he says, I'm keen to do this if this is your will. And we see him the following day being courageous enough to actually sacrifice his own life on a cross for anyone on this earth that would accept him in faith. Just think about how courageous he is. Now, guys, that's wild. A humble Messiah? Wild. A approachable Messiah? Wild. A underdog Messiah? Wild. A courageous Messiah? Wild. Only looking at Jesus' birth would already... I think, cement the fact that we believe that Jesus is wild. Let me ask you two questions before I read Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 20 to us. What about this wild Messiah, about these four things, touched your heart today? And then secondly, how do you resemble this in your own walk of faith? I think that's the important question. If that's who God is, and that's how He revealed Himself to us, how do we resemble those same things in our walk of faith. Let me finish us off with a Christmas story. Luke chapter 2 verses 1 to 20. I'm reading from the message translation today. It says, About that time Caesar Augustus ordered a census to be taken throughout the empire. This was the first census when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Timestamp. Everyone had to travel to his own ancestral hometown to be accounted for. So Joseph went from the Galilean town of Nazareth up to Bethlehem in Judah, David's town for the census. As a descendant of David, he had to go there. He went with Mary, his fiancée, who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. She gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in a blanket and laid him in a manger 
because there was no room in the hostel. There were sheep herders camping in the neighborhood. They had set night watches over their sheep. Suddenly, God's angels stood among them and God's glory blazed around them. They were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. I'm here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for everybody worldwide. A savior has just been born in David's town. A savior who is Messiah and master. This is what you're to look for. A baby wrapped in a blanket and lying in a manger. That is wild. At once the angel was joined by a huge angelic choir singing God's praises. Glory to God in the heavenly heights. Peace to all men and women on earth who please him. As the angel choir withdrew into heaven, the sheep herders talked it over. Let's get over to Bethlehem as fast as we can and see for ourselves what God has revealed to us. They left, running, and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. Seeing was believing. They told everyone they met what the angels had said about this child, and all who heard the sheep herders were impressed. Mary kept all these things to herself, holding them dear, deep within herself. The sheep herders returned and let loose, glorifying and praising God for everything they had heard and seen. It turned out exactly the way they'd been told. What a phenomenal story. May the story bless you on this beautiful Christmas day. Have a blessed Christmas, grace and peace.